corruption of Damascus. All right, we're totally uninhabitable. It, over these years of the war, it's been pretty well <coughs> worn out. It's pretty well destroyed, but it's the most it's continuously inhabited, one of the longest continuously inhabited city in, in, in history. <coughs> but they store all kinds of chemical weapons there. Did you know that? That's right. All of the stuff that came out of Iraq went to Syria, uh, and all, all of Saddam's same stuff went into Syria, and all the stuff the Syrian had was there. And it's out of that place that they sent it. Well, you all been watching the news, right? You've seen the stuff where there's a big threat now that the U.S. is going to step in and put an end to the chemical weapons threat. And you, in your natural mind, you try to figure things out, right? Could it be the U.S. would strike the chemical munitions stuff just to get rid of it? It makes the masters unhappy. It's all possible. We're sitting in the precipice of, of Ezekiel 38, 39. We're sitting on the precipice of the of all of those all that stuff the bible do i gotta do is just read the end time stuff story mm -hmm. and you can see it happen you can see it's playing out right in front of us if you're not looking if you're not ready if there's any doubt in your mind that you're ready to go to heaven this is not the time to be sitting back and saying well i'll do it tomorrow i'll wait till tomorrow to make my change in my life you know, tomorrow I'll, I'll turn off the television. Tomorrow I'll pray longer. Tomorrow I'll get into my word. Tomorrow I'll share my faith. Better start today. Amen. Because right. before we finish this class, the sound of the trumpet could come. That's how close we are. I don't think there's anything left to be fulfilled. Of course, I'm just interpreting this prophecy, which could make me a foolish person. But I don't think there's anything serious that is left to be fulfilled before the sound of the trump comes and the rapture of the church takes place. Not anything at all. Amen. So it could happen tonight. It's all in God's hands. When's that last person say that he's waiting for? Man, it could have happened just five minutes ago. Sam and Christy sent me a text and they say someone they pulled into some place, we're talking to somebody, they had a little service, it's called an impromptu service, and someone got saved. Maybe that's the last one. <laughs> You know, hallelujah, maybe it's the last one. Maybe, maybe somebody in this room will go out to, to get gas tomorrow and stop and all the spirits speak to them and they'll say, you know what, today I'm going to share my faith with that person. And that would be the last one. Either way, any way it happens, I'm okay. Now let's just pursue God. And let Him take care of all the details. We don't need to count days or make predictions. All we need to do is just go after God. So I got the, you know, the other day I was in prayer, and I got this thing, it fits in with our lesson today. And how many of you have ever heard of an app? Yeah. An app. Yeah. You know that thing that you put on your phone? Yeah. I, I just stepped out of the dumb phone here. Uh, we, my wife and I, we stepped out of the dumb phone era there. We got these smartphones, and they're still, they're still smarter than we are. But I'm learning, so there's this thing called an app. Some of them are free. I like free. And some of them are not. You get better figure it out quick because they'll catch you off guard. And you'll own this money. But I was praying about this lesson, and the Lord dropped these three things on my heart. A-P-P. But, 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 and con. And I said, God, what in the world is that? You know, what, what in the world is APP -P and but, 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 and con? And he said, it's this. He says, I want, this is what the word I want you to tell these people on Wednesday night is. He said, always. Pursue compassion for God. Always pursue passion for God. We can do a lot of things. And there's a lot of churches that talk about works and things that have to be done. And I'll tell you, I believe that we are to be doers of the word, not hearers only. But we don't earn anything. We go out and we serve God because we love Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we want others to know Him. Mm -hmm. That's why we go to the park. That's why we share our faith. That's why we do everything. That's why we go help the homeless. That's why we go help the down and out. That's why we do everything. It's because we love God. 
He says, do this. And I can almost, he puts it in a form of command, but I more have the feeling it's, even though I, when my dad tell me, he says, John, I want you to go do this. It was not a request. <laughs> but it was put with politeness and love. I really feel like when God says, I want you to go out, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's like, John, you have to understand, I love everyone. I want everyone to know me. Please, go tell them about me. Show them my love. Let me give you the opportunity to demonstrate my love for the world. Go. That's what I hear. That's how I hear it. I don't hear like I don't hear this guy with the gavel sitting there and slamming it down on the desk. He said, "You must do this." That's not what I hear. I hear this heart of so much love and compassion. And so I said, "Okay, God, what's the B B B B?" And it was simple. It was one word repeated four times. Bible. He said, so many of my people, when they understand the concept of fasting to, to put the flesh under subjection, Amen. but they don't understand that they cannot fast the spirit man. Yeah. They must feed wow. the spirit man. Yeah. The Bible, the word of God is the food of the spirit. We must feed our, our, our spirit man every day, all day long. That's why the Bible says to meditate upon the word day and night. And literally, it's a rehearsal of the scripture. It's a rehearsing of speaking the scripture out loud. And you'll hear, okay, can I just tell you this? The devil cannot read your thoughts. So if I'm, if I'm trying, if I'm praying against the devil, I go like, I'm not doing any good. And if I go, hum da 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 against the devil, I'm doing no good. But if I say, devil, the Bible says Amen. that the blood of Jesus is against you. Devil, Amen. the Bible says that I have all authority to cast you out. Right. Devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. I have power. That's why the Bible says to rehearse, to meditate upon and rehearse the scriptures out loud. Do you know why the Jewish people would open the Torah and they would read it out loud in the congregation? for a spiritual impact, as well as for other people. To, so obviously, they didn't all have Bibles in those days. The Bible, 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 Bible. God said it four times in an emphasis. Get into the Word, Dale. Right? And then this word con is a, an abbreviation for the word continually. And I won't write it out, but it says to press for the mark, the high calling of Christ. Continually pressed to the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Those three things will keep you ready for the rapture. The day you go and stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are doing these three things, always pursuing passion for God, filling your spirit man up with the Bible, and continually pressing towards the, high, the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ, you'll be ready. People ask, can you lose your salvation? Not if you do this. Don't even worry about it. Don't even go there. I, every person shouldn't even ask that question, can I lose my salvation? Why are you even worried about that? Just press into God. And you'll be fine. Do your best and let God do the rest. That's why I always put it. So why did I, why did I want to go there? We've been talking about a number of different things in this book, and I love this book. I think it's very good. It's got a lot of great information. And if you do the things that this Bible, is, this Bible, this book has been talking about, your prayer life will get better, and it will improve. I remember as I began walking down the path of a new Christian, I just was a sponge. I just wanted to grab everything that was out there. And, uh, you know, now I'm more digging into the meat of things rather than, than grabbing a hold of some of so many of the concepts that are out there. Yeah, but it's a never, you never stop learning when you're a Christian. If you do, you grow stale. Amen. You know, the angels fly around the throne of God and they cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Amen. And they've been doing that since the beginning of, of their creation. Amen. Since God created the angels, they've been flying around his throne. You know what? They haven't gotten bored yet. 
There's something new to learn about God every day of our every day of our lives. Don't we can't, if you're getting bored being a Christian, it's your fault. It's your fault. Because the Spirit of God says, just let me reveal, let me teach, let me take you, let me show you, let me help you to understand. The Spirit of God is there for you, just wanting you to say, here I am, God. Use me. Here I am. I'm ready. Let's go. And he will. He'll, he'll hear that prayer. Because the Bible tells us what, if we pray in the will of the Father, whatever we pray, it's ours, right? If we get crazy, we're praying for all different kinds of things that are against God's will for our life. We just about rank those things off. Every once in a while, God will bless us with something that's a desire of our heart, but never if it's going to take us away from the Lord. Never if it's going to put us in harm's way. Never if it's going to tear us down. If it's going to put us in a position of pride. Or if it's going to take us to a place where we're worshiping money more than God. He'll never do that to us. That's probably why I never win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like, we, I, do, I don't know why I do this, but I was having a conversation with God and when the lottery the other day was like $800 million. You know, so I went out and I bought one ticket. Mm -hmm. I always thought, like, you know, have you ever heard that story about the priest whose his parish is about to, to go under financially? He can't make the bills and he can't pay it. He can't do it. He's, he's about to shut the power off. Everything's about to shut down. And he says, God, would you do me a favor? Let me win the lottery. And it didn't happen that, that time. And the next time, says, God, let me win the lottery. And the next time, says, God, let me win the lottery. So finally, he says, look, God, if you let me win the lottery, we can save this place. If not, they're going to close it down. And God's all of a sudden, he hears this voice from heaven says, do me a favor, buy a ticket. <laughs> so I went out and I bought a ticket. You know, you're ready to go to Africa. There they, they have so many orphanages. And it, it's a heartbreaker. You go over there and you can't have, help but have your heart broken. You give them every penny you've got in your pocket. It still doesn't even scratch the surface. Water wells. Where the, where the pastors showed me where he got water from. And it just, he was saying, we need a well here. And I said, well, why is that? And so he took me over and he showed me where the water they were getting from. It's, it's a green pond. Mm -hmm. with, a, with a couple of logs across and everybody goes over and they scoop their water out and they take it home. It breaks my heart. I said, God, what can we do with this $800 million? After tax, it'd be $400 million. But still $400 million. What can we do with that? I made this bargain with God. God, just give me enough to pay off my bills. You can have the rest. You know how many numbers I got? None. <laughs> I bought tickets before and after that, too, and I've done the same thing. God, if you folks get, you can have it all. You know how many numbers I get? None. <laughs> the lottery's not for me. But I'll still try from time to time because, you know, hey, give me a break. Buy a ticket, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I just want you to understand that God is after your heart more than anything else. Your obedience is, a, is an outpouring of your relationship with Christ. The moving of the Holy Spirit, it's about it's an outgrowth of your relationship with Jesus Christ. The outward manifestation of your public ministry is a direct correlation to the strength of your private personal time with the Lord. God will bless us and He will honor our efforts. But when we find ourselves in our prayer closets intentionally seeking God, when we find us, ourselves opening our Bible and yeah. studying the Word of God, it enriches our ability and opens us up to allow the Holy Spirit to move through us in greater and greater measure. Prayer is a big, huge key to that. The prayer in the Bible, literally, I can't figure out, sometimes I think, well, prayer is more important than the Word, and I say, well, no, without the Word, prayer is not that effective, and so, but they just go hand in hand. It's like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all co-equal, they're all one. I think reading the Bible, praying, and worshiping, they all kind of go together in this perfect symmetry of things. And when we get it all right, when we, when we fall into that place where we finally say, okay, God, I'm doing it your way, we see these incredible things called revivals break out. We see a great awakening take place across nations. We see principalities taken take down. We see strong ones broken. We see people set free from drug addiction. And alcoholism is broken. Spirits of pornography and violence are broken off of people's lives. But because of our personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's so key to everything we do out in our public, in the public, the people to see Christ in us. We have to know him before we can show him. We have to 
know who he is. We're going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But we have to know who he is so we can <coughs> share him, so we can show, show people who he is. I want to pick up back in the prayer of Jabez. And I, wanted, I started down this road. I kind of got sidetracked with it. But I, I, I remember the prayer of Jabez. I, was it? Was that a, a Franklin Graham? Does anybody remember who it was that was really promoting the prayer of Jabez? I was trying to remember. So does anybody ring a bell with anybody? He was a bit of a big time ministry. And he was talking about the prayer of Jabez. And I remember listening to it. It really struck me. I even bought a t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> I got a t-shirt with the prayer of Jabez on it. And people would ask me what it was about. That's why I buy t-shirts. I had a great shirt once. And, and it had a cross on it. And a, and a sun with the flame shooting out. It looked like. Uh, and then honestly, we are the sons of God. It looked like the sun's logo. I had more people ask me about that. Sure, is that a sun's logo or what is that? Oh no, man, it's all about Jesus Christ. His death upon. Open up the door to witness to a lot of people. And so I got this shirt on the prayer of Jabez because it's so impacted my life. And a lot of people um, uh, asked me about it and gave me a chance to share with them. And so I was reading through this and it brought back a lot of uh, remembrances about that time in my life. And and I remember going through uh, the, the Psalm 23, the Lord's Prayer, and going through all of those things and, and seeing how they worked out and how God used them and how Pastor was talking about how the Lord's Prayer is not uh, not a word-for-word -word thing. It's a concept, a concept of worship. So each, each portion had a different thing. And, uh, and, and I grew into that, and I really grabbed a hold of it. Because at first, man, I was just praying it out. I was just, you know, praying out, you know, all those things. And, word for word, and I felt, I felt the presence of God when I did that, but it didn't take long before things began to change in that. And I think as God walks us through different aspects of our lives, He prepares us always for tomorrow, prepared, prepared me today for what's happened in my life, and He's preparing me for tomorrow with what's going on today. And uh, we walk through those things so that God can take us to a place, but He's a sequential teacher. He walks us through different aspects. Sometimes He drops revelations in our heart. When I found out about the prayer of Jabez, when I first started reading it, it just really opened me up to an understanding that I was not just, it wasn't just me. You know how you know about churches and stuff, but I really began to understand more about the kingdom aspect, about enlarging my territory, and how God's desire is for us to grow. And he gives us, where we, puts us where we are, teaches us, and expands our territory. But the one thing that really struck me in, on, in that prayer was because of, his, because of his relationship with God. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, those around him. Because of that, God rewarded him with a larger and larger territory. And it was part of my, in my life of, the, of this growing process of this class that just, began, just got through teaching at the Bible college and was sold out, all in sold out and surrendered. And how that is so important to us as we walk in these last perilous days of the end time and even the very elect shall be deceived. How perilous the, 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 the Laodicean church versus the, uh, the lackadaisical and the, you know, the uh, lukewarm churches and all of that. And I began to, it began to stirring in my heart at this time about understanding who God was and understanding about how God wants to enlarge our territories and not keep us static that we are to grow in Christ. So I, but I, what I wanted to get at with this was this, is that I, I, as I got into it, I, I memorized the prayer and I would say the prayer, and again, it was just like the Lord's Prayer, Psalm 23 and all those, that I would find myself uh, encouraged and strengthened by but after a period of time, I would find that sort of ending. And I find myself, but continuing to do that. And I asked God, I said, what's going on? He says, well, I'm, I'm trying to help you to grow out of just a basic understanding of things. And I said, well, God, okay. And he took me over to Judges. I think it's the 15th chapter where Micah uh, made some, some garments that were used by the priests in their Levitical worship. And as I began to read and, understand, and study that, he also trained his son up in the way to be a priest, but he had his, his son was not of the Levite tribe. And, uh, but then a Levite who did come, come his way, he hired to live with him, and he began to utilize them to, to bless his house. 
And what I found out over time is that everything can become an idol. Everything can become an idol. They were using things that were holy, holy designed garments. Of course, his was not because he made it with his hands and he wasn't following all the rules. But everything can become an idol. And I want to put it to you this way. I'm sorry. I, I want to put it to you this way. And it's that we, as people, we like formulas. We like one plus one to equal two every time we add it up. We like two plus two to equal four. We like formulas. We like uh, we like those those procedures and, and, and those kinds of things. Everything should have a beginning and an end. It should run a logical progression. But unfortunately, when we get into the realm of the spirit, it's a whole different ballgame. Because it's not our sovereignty. It's not our will. It's God's. And he does things differently at times. Because who would have ever thought after, you know, he would tell Isaac to take his son up and to, to slay him. Offer him as an, as an offering before the Lord on an altar. God had forbidden that sort of thing. But of course, we know the story went up there and of course he provided a ram. God does things that we don't understand in ways that we don't understand. We would like to say, and the Bible talks about, when you're sick, call upon the elders. They will come and they will anoint you with oil and they will pray for you and the, 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 the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. We, believe, we want to believe that every single time that happened, every single time that we do A, B, C, and D, we will have the outcome of E. But in the spirit realm, it doesn't work that way. Because there's all kinds of things that happen that are at work and at play uh, in, in, in the situation that God brings it out to his outcome and not our own. So we can't, we can't stay in this ABC formula. But we have to do this. We have to continuously pursue God. We need to continuously be in His Word, and we must continuously press to the high mark of Christ Jesus. Doing those things allows us to let the Holy Spirit do His work. And that's where we want to pick this up today, is at the bottom of page 21. Well, let's go back to page 20. We pray God's will when we pray the prayers of the Bible. Jabez prayers, Psalm 23. The Lord's Prayer. We're praying those prayers, and they're, they're for a reason. And every time the Holy Spirit speaks them to you, yeah, I say them. But just don't put, make it something that is where you stay all the time. Elizabeth? I just wanted to share that this is the fourth time that this verse came up to me this week. Praise God. Mm -hmm. and I, just, I just had to write it down. I felt, I felt, I felt like Psalms 4. Psalm 23, 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the dead, I will feel no evil. Four times this week already. Praise God. As soon as I open that one. <laughs> Here's number five. <laughs> hey, there you go. I love God's, God's uh, confirmation. Yes. So we pray the prayers of the Bible. We, uh, we were praying God's will. We're praying God's will. We pray the promises of the Bible. His promises are what? Yes and amen. 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 They are a sure thing. For who? Are they, are they promises for unbelievers? Or are they promises for believers? Everybody. For believers. Are they promises for, are all of his promises for people who are lukewarm? Are they all of his promises for people who are pursuing him? And we don't want to, we don't want to say it, but the truth is it's for those who are pursuing him. We open the, when when God opens the doors to promises, he takes us and he works us through processing and he deals with the things here today. And then he puts us in place for the promises and the blessings for tomorrow. As long as we are one I talked I talked to I taught a class on tithing one time, I told people, I said, look. When, when God brings a blessing into your household, we're the problem, we're, our, we are supposed to tithe on the dollars that come into our home from whatever source it may be. And if it comes from our paycheck, we tithe on our paycheck. If it comes from uh, the lottery, we tithe on the lottery. Wherever it comes from, we tithe on it. But if we don't tithe on it, then God, God says, well, wait a minute, are you following my commandments or not? See, God will give you a little when you're faithful with a little, he gives you more. And when you give him more, when he's, you're faithful with more, he gives you even greater. Now, that's not all a financial blessing, but it's the blessing of the Lord. That's how they work. 
But when we stop doing what God's will, God's word teaches us to do, then we stop God's ability to continue the flow of blessings in that area until we correct the problem. And then he's willing to start, start up again. All right? So we pray the promises of the Bible. We're praying God's will. So down at the bottom, page 21. We pray God's will when we pray with the person of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know you can never go wrong when you go with God? I mean, when the Holy Spirit, you start praying with the Holy Spirit, when He says, you know, I, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's a blessing, but it's also kind of an inconvenience when you wake up at 2.30 in the morning, and there's something just burning on your heart, and you try to go to sleep, and you roll over, you toss over the other side, and you toss over the other side, and you toss over this, and all right, all right, so you jump up out of bed, and you start praying. And it's just like, oh, you start praying and get into the prayer. And just pray whatever it is that God, the Holy Spirit, speaks to your heart. You begin to pray. And it's amazing the difference in the prayer. You know what I'm talking about? When you sit down, I get up every morning and I pray for my family. I pray for, you know, I have the regular things. I, I greet the Holy Spirit. I say, good morning, Holy Father. Good morning, Holy, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your day today. I am your servant. And I just... I have that regular thing that I pray, and I pray for my family. But as I pray for my family, I always want to listen to what? The Holy Spirit. Because while I can pray God bless them, God keep them, God keep the enemy away from them, there may be something the Holy Spirit sees happening today that I need to intercede for. And if I just say my regular prayer, I don't listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to do the work that he's, he wants to do. So I need to be listening to the Holy Spirit. The same thing when you're praying. You, you know, we get up here and we pray for the city. There's times, we, every Friday we gather here, our, our Buckeye Average team gathers and we pray pray for the city, we pray for the pastors, we pray for the churches, we pray for the laws, we pray, pray, we pray the same the same formula of, of things, but we pray different every time. But we always want to listen to what the Holy Spirit is speaking because that's when our effective prayers really come forth. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail much. That effectual comes out of the Holy Spirit. Not out of our minds. We can pray out of our minds, but not necessarily out of God's will. So when we get into the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's the one that really can tell us what God's will is. So we, are, we pray God's will every time we pray with the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Romans 8, 26, 27 gives us even more insight for praying God's will. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. You ever been to a place in your prayer life where you don't have words to speak, and you just groan? Have you ever been there? You know what I'm talking about? When I pray for the lost, I often find myself there. When I start praying for the souls of the lost, not to hear in Buckeye and anywhere, I find myself many times just groaning under the weight of the burden that God has for the lost. I don't have the words to speak. I don't know how to pray effectively for them. But the Spirit does. And when the Spirit reaches the place of groaning on our behalf, then we are reaching God so deeply. I mean, sometimes you don't even really understand what it is. And you kind of have the idea of what he's praying about. That you know it's then going to be answered because when that Holy Spirit starts to groaning, you know there's an answer coming. That's where we need to strive to get to. When we reach a place in our prayer life where time is not what's important. When we reach a place in our prayer life where we're willing to say, God, I'll be here however long it takes. I remember uh, my, my old pastor's father, grandfather, uh, he and another man went up on the top of the mountain. This is when Oral Roberts was beginning his healing ministry. I mean, that's how long ago it was. It was more than a couple of years ago. <laughs> but he and another friend of his, they went up the top of the mountain and they, they cried out to God, said, God, give us, we were not leaving here until you give us this anointing. Do you give us the ability to, to hold crusades, to win the lost through signs, wonders, and miracles? And they stayed there for three days. At the end of the third day, the Holy Spirit, they said the Holy Spirit fell on the mountain and touched them. Well, they both went out. They began evangelizing. My, my pastor's grandfather went to 
down there, uh, and he would start. He would start out with six months healing crusades. People with no eyes had eyes formed in their heads. People with no ears could hear perfectly. I mean, it's a miracle that broke out. Uh, they're amazing, amazing uh, signs, wonders, and miracles. Some of those 125, 150 churches are running in 10,000. The numbers of 10,000 souls now, and many of them have started 10, 20, some 100 different churches. The fruit of that. That, those prayers, that outcry to God, the place where they got to the place they totally surrendered. You know, we, we were talking about, you know, the value of just one soul. You know, what is one soul worth? How far will we go? How much will we spend to win one soul? And I, I always go back and I say, well, I don't know about you, but I don't, that man that won Billy Graham to the Lord has a rich reward. How much is one soul worth agonizing over? How much is one soul worth an inconvenience of going across the world? You know, where is, where is God sending you? What is God having you do? Is it to teach the children? Is it to teach the youth? Is it to pastor a church? Is it to talk to the people you work with in your in your workplace? Is it a, is it a loved one? Is it a husband? Is it a wife? Is it a child? It's worth it. I remember sitting and talking to my dad about the Lord. And we can get two big red recliners. And I would go over every Friday and we'd go out to lunch. And I would sit there and after I got saved, I was just on fire. I mean, I was telling everybody about Jesus. Oh, I was telling everybody. And, uh, because I just wanted them to know how much God meant to me, how wonderful his love was. And I was telling my dad, telling my dad, telling my dad. And every every Friday I would tell him and he would sit there and he would tolerate me. My dad was had been a minister, a music minister in Salvation Army and you know, he had done all those kinds of things. He grew up in the Salvation Army. I believe my dad had been saved, and my mom too, and they were all in the Salvation Army. But I was sitting there one day with him, and, and he all of a sudden I realized he was white knuckles. Just grabbed a hold of that, that recliner, and his tears streaming down his face, and his chin was just quivering, and, and he just shouted out, What do I have to do to get saved? <laughs> I didn't even see it coming. I didn't feel anything different. I was just telling him about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit stepped into the midst of the situation. The Holy Spirit led him to the cross. Wow. And I led him to the Lord. I don't understand how it all works. But I know I pray all the time for my dad. My grandmother said she, from the moment she knew my mom had conceived me, my mom and dad had conceived me, that she began praying for me to the Lord. The minute she knew my name, she started calling me out to the Lord by name. Every day before she, when she, before she got out of bed, and every night before she went to sleep, she prayed for every one of her children, every one of her grandchildren, every one of her great grandchildren, every one of her great great grandchildren, all of her life because of prayer. I'm where I'm at today. You are where you're at today because someone is praying for you. God responds to prayer. We may not see it over the course of a lifetime, but when we get to heaven, we'll see the fullness of the reward of all the prayers that we've prayed and all the people that we've talked to. Because even though I said the salvation prayer to get rid of, get rid of the soul winners a hundred times, one time, when I was by myself, I cried out to God. Because of them. Because they shared Jesus with me. Plus, the Holy Spirit prays for us because we are weak. We often don't have a clue as to what to pray. The Holy Spirit lives within us and can help us pray. The Holy Spirit knows the will of God and helps us pray according to God's will. Isn't it cool that, that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you? Isn't it cool that He knows every thought? Isn't it cool that He knows everything you say? Isn't it cool that it kind of gets a little scary? He knows every thought. He knows every word we say. He sees everything we see. You know, He knows what we touch. He knows what everything. You know, and there's this whole there's God sitting there in my heart, and He's, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm looking around, and all of a sudden I'm realizing, you know, I should some of this stuff. Because he's knocking on my heart saying, John, where are you going? Oh, thank you, Lord. And I changed the direction. Because he's already there. You know, it's really hard to sin. Well, I shouldn't say it's easy to sin. Because we just make a decision, right? We go do something. But the Holy Spirit makes sure we know that it's not the right thing to be doing. If you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, then you know beyond a shadow of a doubt when you're about to sin. Because he will, he will be knocking on your heart really, really hard. And saying, don't go there. Okay. So it's important that, to note that prayer is not just reading words on a page. 
He has this prayer guide that includes Bible verses, promises, and prayers from the Bible. You can read them aloud to God as you agree with them in prayer, but prayer is so much more than just reciting promises and prayers. As you pray, remember that the Holy Spirit wants to pray with you and through you. As you pray, you may feel an inner sense of burden or heaviness about a situation or a person in need. Sometimes you don't even need words to pray. God's Word says that you can groan out of your spirit and He understands. In fact, the Holy Spirit will often groan along with you. As the Holy Spirit groans and cries within you, there's a spiritual connection between you and God, between heaven and earth, between the Holy Spirit within you and God the Father who hears your cry. God wants you to pray effectively. I want to say that again. God wants you to pray effectively. He doesn't want you just to spin your wheels. Or it's not just an exercise in time. It's not, it's not a thing where God says, well, I just want you to pray because I want to see if you'll be obedient to me. He wants you to pray effectively. And he wants you to pray confidently. He wants your prayers to make an impact. He has equipped you with this word and with the spirit so that when you pray, you aren't just making wishes to God. He wants your prayers to be in agreement with his will and purpose. He wants your prayers to release the resources of heaven and bring them to fruition in situations on the earth. So God puts you in a place. God puts you in a situation. God puts you in a church. God puts you in a job. God puts you in a school. He puts people in your path. He puts you in people's paths. He puts you in, a, in, in a, and it gives you the ability to meet whatever need people have in the spirit. Just be ready. Just be ready. Part of being ready is understanding who God is. So I want to talk about this for the remainder of our time. We have eight minutes, so we're going to have to move kind of quick. So talking about the names of God, you'll find this, this first group on page 59. And I want, I want to tell you this. The names of God, something God started with me a long time ago. Today I have nine pages, one-liners, nine pages of names, attributes, and characteristics of God. Why is that important? Because how many of you know there's a lot of false doctrine out there? How many of you know that there's doctrines of demons, traditions of men, all these kinds of things, and they're all set to try to tear down God's people's ability to believe in God, to dilute the word of God, they're trying to, to control people, whatever the reason, they're not God. When we understand who God is, what his names are, what they mean, what his attributes are, how does he work, what his characteristics are, what is he like, then we can, we can see things a lot clearer. Plus, it helps us have this understanding of, of how he moves. All right? So I'm going to take a, take a shot at some of these names. If I don't pronounce them right, it's because I'm not a Hebrew scholar. All right? So if I mess them up, please have patience with me. A little grace. The first one is, God, you are Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is always present with me. That's so awesome because I know, just like I said, he's inside of me, knows everything I think, see, hear, and do. So it helps me understand his character is trying to drive me to holiness and righteousness. My thoughts are taking me elsewhere that I know that's not God. I know that's the enemy. God is not gray. He is black and white. He allows us the ability to do things by our own volition. But God's word is very clear. Be holy as I am holy. Be righteous as I am righteous. He teaches us line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And he changes us from glory to glory. He's always progressing us, which way? To heaven. He's always getting us ready to meet him face to face. Jehovah Shema. You are Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He meets all of my needs. Man, that's so true. We'll find, we're finding that out. We just put out a couple things on Facebook, a donation campaign. Have you seen our new video? Anybody seen our new video yet? If you, if you haven't liked my page, you need to, because this guy, this, this video is just phenomenal. One of the ladies in our team is, uh, is uh, so anointed, so talented, and she's a video photographer. And you'll see, she got, did two videos for us and just put, the, put the, the last one on. And it's just cool, we have to see it. 
but he's a provider. So he's given us, he, we're starting to see money start to come in. Today I had another $35 pledge, hey, praise yeah. God. I've only got 6400 something dollars to go. <laughs> but praise the Lord, we're starting, right? Oh, I take it back, I had 150 coming in the other day, so I'm still 6400 <laughs> But I have no doubt we'll go. He's told us to go, so we just made the plans, we're going to go, we know he'll provide. Jehovah Rapha, he is the Lord who is my healer. Show of hands, how many people have ever had a miracle of healing in your body? Raise your hand. Amen. Praise God. I can raise my hand about ten times. Yes. God has healed me so many times. Yes. So you Jehovah Shalom, the God who is my peace, he makes my life complete. I didn't know that as part of that name until I read this book. Jehovah Shalom, the word, the Lord who is my peace and who makes my life complete. I love that. He made us. It's his, I'm his idea, Craig. It's not my fault. <laughs> Next time somebody says something to you about like, you know, you're just not good enough or whatever. Hey, I'm God's idea. Talk it over with him. <laughs> Amen. You are Jehovah's in you, the Lord who is my righteousness. Now, this is what's so wonderful. God says, be righteous as I am righteous. Be holy as I am holy. He is my righteousness. I can't be righteous of my own. I can't be holy on my own. It's his work. He's doing it. He's fashioning me. He's still working on me. You know that song? Make me what he wants to be. Yeah. Took a cast of work. We to make the moon and the stars, the sun, sun and the, the earth and Jupiter and Mars. Mars. I love it. Be patient he must be. Because he's, he's still, still working, working on me. Amen. I think you're a work in progress. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, and Jehovah Suri, the Lord my rock. You're Jehovah Nissi, the Lord who fights for me, my warrior who brings victory when I lift up the banner of his name. Hallelujah. You know, when David won his battles, it wasn't because of David's expertise. It was because of God's grace. That's it. Amen. How many times could David just said to God and said, David, I've had enough of you? A Bathsheba? Well, it should have been enough, but it wasn't. Killing her Uriah should have been enough, but it wasn't. As long as you repent, go back to God. He's got you. Go over to page 93. I want to read through these. This is day 23 in the prayer section. 93. So you are El Shaddai, the God who is sufficient for all things, who has made covenant with me. I love that. The God who is sufficient for all things, who has made covenant with me. Today we think we, if someone goes and they bargain out strength, we cause them to surrender or accept what we're offering them. But God says he makes covenant with us. We don't have to beg God. We just go to God. His grace and his mercy is for us. You are Elkanah, the God who is jealous for me, and Eshokla, the God who is a consuming fire. Wow. He is a consuming fire. Amen. You are Jehovah Sephiah, the Lord of hosts. Here's one we all know. He is Abba. Abba, Abba. Abba. Daddy God. I still remember Joe and I can hear him say, Papa? Papa God? When you were talking about the Eastern Sky, I remember she would say, she would get up every morning and she'd walk, little girl, she'd walk out because she was told that Jesus is coming from the Eastern Sky. And she'd walk outside and say, John, I'd walk out every morning and look at the Eastern Sky and I'd say, Papa? Are you coming today? <laughs> Papa, are you coming today? You are Baal Perizim, the God of great breakthrough. You are El Halyan, the highest God. You are El Roi, the God who sees me. One of the things I pray every day is God, tomorrow, before I go to bed, say God, tomorrow. Let me be that man that puts a smile on your face. 
Let me bring joy to your heart. In the morning I say, God, today, let me be in your will to do your work so that I can see a smile on your face when I go to bed tonight. Let's all have that kind of a heart. Let's pray. Father, tonight we just come before you. We recognize, God, you are all of these things and so many more. Yes. And God, that you are all in all. You're the all-sufficient one. You're the, uh, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You're the first and the last. You're the everlasting to everlasting. You're the King of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. But you're also the servant, <coughs> the shepherd. You're also the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. You were the willing sacrifice that died upon the cross. You were the one that, that left heaven to come to the earth, to, through the womb of a, of a virgin. You walked and suffered and were tempted as we are tempted yet without sin. You gave yourself willingly and by your love helped, helped your, your, your dying flesh upon that cross. Understanding that as, as you did that, every sin of every person of all of creation was being piled upon your life. And in the moment of time, the Father had to turn his eyes off of you for the very first time. You went to death, to hell, and took the, the keys of death, hell, and the grave. You conquered sin and death. <laughs> you took the, the sting of death and, the, you know, the permanency of the grave, and you crushed it under the weight of your love and your mercy. God, where do we begin? How can we even start to declare who you are? How can we even finish in a lifetime of eternity, Father, in declaration of who our God is and all that he has done? All the time will testify. I read in the Bible just the other day when all of the fish and all of the, the trees and all of the rocks will cry out praises to your name, O oh God. Amen. Even the inanimate objects know you are God. So, Father, we pray to you in this place tonight. And my prayer, Father, today is enlarge the territory of every person in this room. Let them encounter God in such a way that they're willing to pay the price, that they're willing to go that extra mile, that they're willing to spend that extra time in prayer, that they're willing to, to read just one more verse of the scriptures, not with, not with rapidity, but with thoughtful prayer and meditation. Father, they will see you for who you are in their lives. They will understand your plans for them. Now, Father, they will rise up and, and show, show the world who you are in their life, they will not hide you under a bushel, but they will light up the world with the love and the light of Christ and the Holy Spirit's fire that burns within them. In Daniel and Revelations, the fire, your eyes were as of, of, of a fire, oh God. Let it be like that for us. That when people see us, there's such passion for Christ that there is no way anyone can come around us without catching a little bit of a singe from the fire of our passion for Christ. God, we love you with all that we are, and today we just come and we just bow before your throne, again asking for your mercy and your grace and forgiveness for our sins. And Lord, that tonight will be an amazing night of sleep, and I pray, Father, that you will come, and you will speak to us in our dreams, and that we will come in, in the morning, and we will awaken, and we will remember what you have said to us in the nighttime. Bless us as we go our way. Prepare us for Sunday, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.